a beautiful day here in New York City. Right now I'm at Washington Square Park. The trees and flowers are starting to bloom. Spring is officially here. I have a very exciting evening planned for tonight. I'm going to one of the most affordable tasting menu Michelin starred restaurants. The restaurant is called 63 Clinton and their tasting menu is $92. Only $2 more than Red Paper Clip, the Michelin starred restaurant I went to back in January, which I really enjoy. Tonight's dining adventure is special to me for two reasons, actually. One, it's my birthday. I don't like birthdays, I don't like getting older, but the alternative, i.e. dying, is much worse. So in reality, I'm incredibly thankful to be here. It's just, I have so many goals in my life and I wanna accomplish so many things, but with each passing year, it just seems like I have less and less time to achieve them. But one of my goals is to simply live a good life. And that is kind of what I'm doing tonight. This is gonna be my 70th Michelin starred restaurant that I've dined at. Food is without a doubt one of my main passions in life. When I look back at all the amazing restaurants and all the amazing food that I've consumed, it really makes me happy. And this 70 Michelin starred restaurants is a pretty cool milestone. Although there are definitely a lot of other areas of my life that need improving on, especially my social and dating life, this is the fourth birthday in a row that I've been alone. To be fair, one of those birthdays was during March of 2020, so uh, no one really wanted to see anyone during that time. But at the same time, right now, I'm still just so incredibly happy. I'm so optimistic about the future. I'm so motivated these days. And I get to go to a Michelin starred restaurant tonight. And without any further delay, let's head to the Lower East Side and check out 63 Clinton. 63 Clinton opened in 2021 on the Lower East Side. It's the product of longtime friends Sam Klontz and Raymond Trin. The pair previously worked together at the three Michelin starred chef's table at Brooklyn Fair and the one starred bar Ucho, where Sam became the youngest American chef to earn a star at only 26 years old. Their current restaurant is located in a small and dimly lit space that used to be a location of the pizza restaurant Speedy Romeo. As a result, 63 Clinton inherited a classic wood fire oven that plays an interesting role in the creation of a number of their dishes. When I was seated, I was given a hot towel to cleanse my hands, which was a nice touch, then I got right into the menu. The cuisine could be described as modern American, but it's clear there's a global influence that captures the ethos of the restaurant. As soon as I relayed my order, the food came out at a steady pace throughout the night. The first dish was a real winner. It was a breakfast taco with ajitama, which is also known as a ramen egg, a hash brown, and smoked trout roe. It was such a fun creation, with every component executed to perfection. The hash brown had a remarkable flavor, but the salty burst from the trout roe took it to another level. My meal was off to an amazing start. The next course was one I paid extra for, and I was debating for weeks if I should actually purchase it since it was quite expensive, but at the same time, it is a signature dish of 63 Clinton. It was the caviar hand roll, which was prepared tableside and cost $55. There's no question that dining at Michelin starred restaurants is expensive, but spending $55 on a dish that will only take a few bites to eat seems like something only for rich people. But I thought, what the hell? It's my birthday, I'm dining alone, and damn it, I love caviar. In essence, it's a simple creation consisting of sushi rice marinated in black vinegar, a touch of wasabi, a generous portion of golden ocetra caviar, with all of it being wrapped in Japanese nori. It's rich, decadent, and absolutely delicious. The dish is a success for the fact that it doesn't complicate the caviar, a food that is just so perfect on its own. I have no regrets about spending extra for the hand roll. It was certainly one of the highlights of my meal. Next up was a take on a niçoise salad with bluefin tuna, frise, and hercover. The tuna was of great quality, but the surrounding flavors complemented the fish so well. So far, the food was three for three, and my dinner was just getting started. For my next course, I feasted on a lobster and crab salad with celery and cucumbers. While the flavors weren't as bold as some of the other plates I had that evening, there was still a good amount of lobster and crab, which still made for an enjoyable dish. Following the salad, it was one of my favorite courses of the evening, the Japanese sweet potato with a coloradito mole, cotilla cheese, and pepitas. By itself, the potato was executed to perfection with a hearty texture and earthy flavors, but it was the mole that made it truly special. There was a tremendous depth of flavor in the mole, and it complemented the potato perfectly. I just loved this dish. Following that, I was presented with the pasta course, which was paired with a loaf of dark rice sourdough. 
It seemed a bit odd to be consuming bread this far into the dinner, but I was blown away with just how good it was. The bread was textural perfection with a crisp outside and a pillowy inside that was punctuated with seeds which added another dimension entirely to the loaf. Plus, I loved the sprinkling of salt on top and combined with the smooth butter, this was literally some of the best bread that I've had for a while. It was incredible. In addition, this was a time where dining solo proved to be a real benefit as couples split the loaf while I enjoyed one entirely to myself. Turning my attention to the pasta, it was an agnolote with ricotta, white asparagus, and morels. I love morel mushrooms, and the agnolote were delicious little pillows of joy. Once again, I was thoroughly pleased with both the quality and variety of food. Finally, it was time for the last savory course, the Berkshire pork short rib with Masaman curry and parsnip grits. The meat was so juicy and succulent, my knife sliced through it like butter. I relished the curry, which wasn't spicy, but still rich and flavorful. I was also fond of the grits, which added a hearty element to the dish. Overall, this pork was another of my top courses of the night. To conclude my meal was the baked Alaska, filled with a strawberry rhubarb sorbet and a lighted candle on the side. When making my reservation, I didn't mention that it was my birthday, but shortly after I arrived, I was asked if I was celebrating anything special, and I wasn't gonna lie. It did feel a little awkward being reminded that I was celebrating my birthday alone, but that candle did make for some good lighting. After blowing it out and making a wish, I dove into my baked Alaska, a truly classic American dessert. While I never had a baked Alaska before, the flavors and textures were all familiar as the meringue shell surrounded a pleasant sorbet and cake-like bottom. It was certainly a nice treat. To sum it up, I had a great time eating at 63 Clinton. All of the food was magnificent, but I really enjoyed how varied and how it pulled from influences all over the globe. I certainly left the restaurant happy and satisfied. Just finished. That was hands down the best meal I had this year. That was also the best birthday meal I've had, period. Every single course was delicious. Everything was just so thought out. I loved every single thing I had. I really can't think of any complaints. And that caviar hand roll, I mean, it was decadent. It is an extra cost, but oh, it was just so good. It was pure heaven. One certainly doesn't have to have that to have a great meal at 63 Clinton, but if you can spare it, it's worth it. And the service of the restaurant was excellent. The courses came out at a good pace and everyone was really nice, courteous. Even though I was there alone, I felt welcomed. And yeah, I mean, they really made this a great birthday meal for me. Not to mention, I noticed like half the people around me were celebrating birthdays too. It is certainly a great restaurant for a special occasion. And value-wise, it is certainly one of the best value Michelin-starred restaurants in New York City. Hands down, it was incredible. Yes, Red Paperclip is $2 less, but I think 63 Clinton provides so much more value. I mean, the food is just so much more interesting, more complex. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Red Paperclip, but I think 63 Clinton is a step above. 63 Clinton, without a doubt, provides the best sub $100 tasting menu in New York City. I know, $92 is still expensive, but if one wants the Michelin star tasting menu experience for at least as cheap as you can do it, 63 Clinton is the answer. It is hands down the best in that regard in New York City. I loved my dinner tonight and I hope to return again to 63 Clinton. This has been a fantastic birthday, a fantastic birthday dinner. I'm so happy. This was excellent.